Hello YouTube and uh, welcome to another video. Um, I'm going to do this video today on um, another one of the machines from my collection. Um, now, this machine, um, when I did my tour around the house uh, yesterday, um, I commented on this one, which was upstairs in the in the Hoover room. Um, I've never actually done a review on this before, and uh, it got a comment from Hoover Lux about how much he liked the colour of it. Uh, Hoover Lux, uh, he's got a great channel. Um, I'm sure maybe a lot of the vacuum collectors would know who Dorian is now. Um, his channel is called Hoover Lux, and he does uh, an awful lot of stripping down and refurbishing videos on his channel. Uh, it's a great channel. Dorian's a really great guy. He, uh, learning his stuff rapidly about the, uh, the vacuum cleaner scene and uh, he does tend to like his brightly coloured vacuums uh, he did a I think it was a pure power, no it wasn't it was a turbo power 2 I think that he did in bright yellow only a couple of weeks or so ago and I thought what a wonderful looking cleaner that is I'll have to get my orange one down and, uh, and bring that one out but this one's a um, rather unusual machine this is a Sanyo uh, I bought this about uh, 2013, I think, I, I had this one. And uh, it was an eBay find that was right here in Stoke-on-Trent, uh, where I live. And um, I think I paid about 10, I can't remember exactly how much I paid for it, but it wasn't very much. I saw it on eBay and I thought, well, that's a really unusual looking machine because at first glance, I thought it was a Panasonic uh, because it looks very, very similar to a Panasonic, but in fact, uh, it's actually a Sanyo, and it looks uh, in immaculate condition, to be honest. Uh, there's no actual way to, 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 to see how old it is, because I, don't, I can't find any manufacturing date on the product label, on the, uh, what do they call it now, the, the, the rating sticker on the back. I can usually date machines quite well, especially Hoover's, uh, Electroluxes, they usually put a date code on, on the product sticker but this hasn't for some reason so when I had to take it apart uh, and I was having a look for the, uh, you know, the little date wheels that you get inside and um, from what I could uh, gather from it most of them were 1998 so I think this was actually made in 1998 it's a 1200 watt so it would actually figure uh, that that would be around about the right time scale because Hoover Pure Powers of the late 90s were around about the 1200, 1300 watt mark as well so, what caught my eye on this one is the fact that it's, uh, it's got a power control which varies the suction, which is rarely, relatively uncommon for an upright uh, bagged cleaner to have a power control. And I'll, uh, I'll show that in a, in a short while when I get the camera off the stand. Um, also, this machine, because it's been stored in my uh, Hoover room now for the last three years, re very rarely being used. When I first had it and I cleaned it all up, I put a new belt in, which wasn't, uh, it was actually a pattern belt, and it was from this packet, which is electro part, and um, it's to fit the SCA, SCB, uh, Sanyo series, basically of that, and you can see on the picture there, it is that cleaner. So there's only one belt in there because I put the other one on three years ago. But unfortunately now, when I came to use it the other day, the um, brush roll doesn't go around properly on the carpet. You, you start pushing it around and you hear it slowing down, which is the, the classic problem you get with an upright with a stretch belt. So from now on, I, I, I'm always storing the, the vacuums upstairs with the belts off the spindles because I get fed up now, I've put a new belt on, and then within three years it's stretched. And it happened to another machine as well, uh, on one of my pure power. I put another belt on there, and then I found it, it had sort of perished in the machine and, and all stretched as well. So I thought, well, that one's no good either. So, you know, it's best when you've got a collection of uprights, like this, to store them with the belts off. So what I'm going to have to do is uh, show you how to change a belt on a machine. I'm sure most people know how to do it, but we're going to have to do it on this one. So, let's have the camera off, and we'll, uh, we'll talk about the machine first before I do this belt. Because uh, it's, it's not something I would normally do, is um, do actual maintenance on one of my videos, but I thought, well, why not? You know, um, Hooverlux does it on his videos, so 
I might as well have a go on one of mine, maybe do a few more stripping down videos of some of my backs and show how to take motors apart. It's something I could do in the future because um, obviously with the old cleaners like that I had to strip completely the, the motors down in um, the senior over there to do the bearings and obviously you've got to take get to the bottom bearing. Again in this one I've had the motor out of it and done the um, both bearings on the motor. You know you have to take the fan, fan case housing off and take the fan off to get to it because the motor was a little bit uh, a little bit whiny. This machine is nearly 20 years old and I know it doesn't look it but anyway it's uh, it's orange on the front it's uh, it's actually black on the back so it's a, it's a two tone machine uh, we've got the power switch there just on the side and uh, on the front what we've got is the automatic power control there now obviously it uh, it's only a 1200 watt machine, so I'd imagine on maximum it's going to be 1200. On minimum, I'd imagine it's probably I don't know, know three, four hundred watts. But it does slow the motor down quite substantially when you when you're altering it backwards and forwards. Um, but it also slows the brush roll down as well because it's only got one motor. Then obviously when you're reducing the suction, you're reducing the the speed that the brush roll goes round as well. So that could be a little bit of a disadvantage. I think really it's more suitable for using the hose, that is, if you wanted to clean curtains with it, for instance, or delicates, then it's not going to suck the things up the, the hose. The only other one I've got with a variable power control on upright cleaners is uh, the Sebo Felix and the Miele S7. Both of those have got uh, variable power, and it's very useful. You know, you don't always want full power. Most cylinders have got uh, variable power, so why not have it in uprights, if you know what I mean. OK, so there's the power control. Inside here we've got the bag, All right? There's the inside of the bag door there. Uh, inside the bottom of here as well is uh, what basically is the. It looks like that's the only exhaust filter it has. I think there was another one in there originally, but it got um, it had perished, so I had to throw it away. There's another filter just inside here which isn't accessible for the user you can only get to that one when you take the motor casing out uh, again and I did have to clean this one out because it was a little bit grubby inside uh, we've got a label there it's talking about the bottom uh, edge of the paper bag and you must put it in a certain way blah de blah de blah right there's the bag that's just dropped out and that reveals the the system here when you put the bag in I mean just apologize for the lighting again it's because it's black inside, but that looks like um, something that you you push to push the bag off. It's spring loaded, that is. So obviously now you can't close the bag door without the bag in that, because that latch stops you. Uh, this is only a pattern part bag. This is that uh, I bought. Uh, since it's an electro part one again. It's just a cheapo bag. Obviously, I don't use this one very much, so it doesn't really matter about it having cheap bags. The pre-motor filter, uh, as you can see. It's actually um, half of a Miele pre-motor filter. I find these are, these are quite useful actually because I get them in my Miele bags and um, I can use them and cut them up basically for filters that are like obscure. I didn't want to pay for a filter pack for this, you know, so why not just put a Miele one in? It does the job. Uh, right, so that's the bag housing there. So if we just put the bag back in, and again it's just a simple case of mount it on the hole and it's pretty difficult to do with one hand I don't know how people do it you know it's a bit tricky to get bags on when you're holding the camera in one hand but there we go it's on it doesn't seem a very very tight fit on there but there we go it is on we just make sure again that's it and then we can put the bag housing back on and again put that back in at the bottom there's no, um, there's no latch or anything on there, you just click shut. It's not the tightest of fits, but it does close. Okay, on the back of the machine, if we go around the back here, we have um, the cable here, which is, uh, let's just turn it round so that these lights are shining on the back of it. 
that is, I would have said, about a seven metre cable there. It's not the longest one. Uh, we have the hose here. Now, the hose comes out of the uh, the back here and it's fixed at an angle which doesn't swivel round. That is a fixed um, joint there. So the hose comes out here. If I just take the, the cable off, and I think we've got a... Yes, the top one rotates all the way around so we can drop the cable off. And that will then will allow me to get the hose out at the bottom. The hose doesn't have any kind of support when it goes down the back of the cleaner here. There's no... Uh, what it could have done with it was like a hook to secure it in, but it doesn't have one. So when you're pulling it along, it does tend to flop about a bit on the back. Right, so that the hose comes out at the bottom here. It's just a push fit. It's a very, very narrow diameter. That is, and I would imagine that would uh, that would block up quite easily. Again, I do find this with quite a few of the older uh, bagged up rights, especially the Turbo Power Two as well. Only had a very narrow um, hose cuff, and uh, they do get blocked very, very easily. And it was a problem with the Turbo Power Two. So what they did on the Turbo Power 2 was to put a, a, a more wider diameter um, stair hose on it, which was to try and alleviate the problems of these getting blocked up. But again, that is very, very small. So if we take it off, it, it, it's a fairly long hose. I mean, it's, it's a very heavy hose, I must say that. It seems very, very good quality, that does. Um, but this machine was, it was actually made in Mexico, so you know it's, it's not one that's made in China. Uh, so that's the hose, and we come down here again, and we see what we've got is our rather worn. I think it has been used a little bit. Uh, dusting brush there, and I think the actual bristles, if you push them, come away from that. But I'm not going to do it here because I'm not going to get it back on with one hand. So. That's one of the tools there. That's the only tool which is a combined um, upholstery tool and dusting brush. On the side here, we've got the um, extension, and inside the extension is another extension. So we have two extension pipes. And then on the side of the machine here, we've got the crevice tool. So you could actually form rather a long extension from that to be able to get down or get up quite high. So that's those. I'm not going to put them back on the machine just at this stage. We'll just dump them over there. I'll put the hose back in now. Okay, and that just fits in at the bottom here. Okay, now this has got a what's called an automatic height adjust, so it uses uh, what we call a floating head. So if I just put the, the cleaner into recline mode, and then you can see is that the back wheels actually tip right underneath, so that the the floor head then automatically adjusts to the carpet. What I'm saying is that the back wheels aren't actually fixed on here; they're actually on the bottom of the upright case, which is a design I've seen before on the uh, on the Panasonic. Now I did used to have a Panasonic, but I sold it to my to my neighbour because he needed a new cleaner. So it was a white version, basically looked like this, a Panasonic upright. That's MCUG something or other. It was very bog standard Panasonic. It had been around for quite some time, and I think it was based on this, to be honest. I think in some markets this would have had um, a headlight on the front of here. Um, I think I've seen some American cleaner called uh, the Ricard Vibrance uh, that looks very, very similar in shape. Uh, it's like a basic shape of, I can't really get it all in at the moment, but I think it does look very similar to that. But then again, it would do because the American Ricards are based on, uh, the older ones are based on Panasonic designs. So now if I turn it up and we'll have a look, have a look at the base. Okay, right, so here we have the uh, the base of the cleaner, and it has a very, very uh, sturdy 
wooden brush roll with uh, a very very good um, stiff bristle on which is probably why the belt was slipping because this is actually a very uh, vigorous agitator this is there is no edge cleaning on it so this gap here you've got a very wide gap there a little bit like the Sibo X4 where there's no cleaning done on that side but you've got a big wide path here which is actually it, it is a wide cleaning head, it's, it's a wide cleaner. I think this really would be um, more suitable for the American market really, because it, it does look a very American cleaner, especially when you're looking at the, uh, the product label here, which says it's made in Mexico. Um, SCA7AX, it's a 1200 watt, BAB approved, but it is a 240 volt. So it obviously was never meant for the American market. It hasn't been imported from over there because it is a 240. But I've, I, it's the only uh, cleaner that I've seen in England that I've bought here which says made in Mexico on. And that, that, that I, do, I do find very unusual. So, if I get a screwdriver and we'll just change this belt. Uh, just if I put the camera up on the top of here. There we go. So let's, uh, let's have the bottom cover off. Good job on an electric screwdriver, isn't it? Some of these screws take forever to get out, and then you have to push it. There we go, there's two clips at the end of here, so we'll push them in. And there's another screw here, in the middle. And there we go, and then we can remove the sole plate. Okay. So, here we have our belt, which is... Let's... Yes, that's very, very stretched. In fact, I can see how how perished that actually looks there. I don't know whether we can make it out there about how cracked that belt looks. And that has only been on for three years. But it has, it has started to perish inside there. And that is one of these electro part. Again, I don't think electro part, to be honest, are, are very good. I mean, that's got a, a code there, DBB0024. Uh, that's obviously the, the code for the, for the belt. So if I now get the new one, just here, and we'll have the brush roll out. And again, that uh, took much, no effort to get out because that's so stretched. On here we can see the, uh, the bearing there. I did um, grease and lubricate those bearings. The other one's in the other end, but the, the bearing cap is obviously still on top of there. So we'll put the, the bearing cap back on this end again. We'll put the belt on. Get over the spindle. So now we need to get that into here. Like so, and then this one needs to go into this side and there we go that's that's on now very easy to do and let's put the base back on uh, so it just sits onto the cleaner doesn't it sometimes they clip in at the front but this one it doesn't by the looks of things Screw's still in the hole and it's stopping me from pushing it down. There we go, that's better. That seems to have gone in now. 
do the same on this side. Let's just pop that screw out and then clip it in. Awkward one this one is. We can get that back into its hole. It took ages that did, didn't it? And the same for this side. There we go. So tip it back so what I'll do now I'll, um, I'll plug it in and uh, we'll put some uh, some rice and some oats and a few gravy, gra gravy granules or whatever I've got over there on the carpet and uh, we'll see how well it picks up so let's just plug it in there we go and we'll just um, turn it on. So that's um, that's on low at the moment. I can turn it on, and that's on maximum. So for the purposes of uh, this demo I shall uh, leave it on maximum and um, we'll put some dirt down on the floor and like on the last video I will just position the camera on the carpet here and we're just wanting to see if it actually agitates the carpet well okay so we'll just plunk that there I shall spread some dirt down Some good bits of rice going down on there. And then we'll put some porridge oats down as well. A few gravy granules here for good measure. And let's see how it does. Here we go then. good that was so it's all definitely saw some uh, good agitation going on there let's just have a quick hoover up of the rest of the carpet now or should I say a vacuum up of the rest of the carpet that is yeah there we go then
Okay, so there we go. That has done a pretty good job of that. I was very impressed, to be honest, with the uh, agitation on there. The um, particles were really, really bouncing quite well in front of the uh, floor head, and I thought they would do from the stiffness of the brush roll. Again, I think this is a, this is a, very much uh, an American style cleaner. This is um, that brush roll really does agitate the carpet very well indeed. I mean, if I had put a Dyson across there, those particles just wouldn't have moved. They are, um, they are not very good at all, but this, I mean, this is comparable to the Kirby that I tested earlier today. Um, so, having that new um, belt makes uh, an awful lot of difference, because the old one, I mean, that had, um, that had stretched so much just in three years. So, when I finish this demo, which is going to be shortly, I shall be taking the belt back off it again before it goes back upstairs. But I'm uh, very impressed with how easy that was to push as well. Um, on the full 1200 watts with that floating head, and I can really see the way that it has um, left those uh, grooming lines in the carpet there. It really has um, raised the pile on here very well. I mean, this is an old carpet now. This has been down since 2006, so it's... Uh, it's 11 years old this carpet now and uh, I do like aggressive brush rolls that uh, will bring up the pile on here because it does get flattened in places. I, um, I have shampooed this carpet on numerous occasions but unfortunately being beige, <laughs> beige carpets just never a very good idea especially if you've got pets and I do have a cat that comes in and out and she brings all kinds of horrible things in so but there we go. That uh, Hoover Lux did comment on that, so I thought I might put this one on just uh, so that he could have a look at it going. So that's the uh, the Sanyo seven stage. Uh, I think I've shown everything on it now. It's, it's as I say, it's a very basic, very simple cleaner, and that uh, that cable length was really hampering me there. And, it, and I should really have put it put the uh, plug in over this side of the room. In all honesty, because that was really getting in my way. I, I I think it's actually a six meter cable rather than a seven meter. But then again, I bet this was about uh, 50 or £60, pound, wherever it was sold. Um, I don't think this was in the Argos catalogue. I don't remember ever seeing this. I think we have had Sanyo uprights before in this country, but um, not this particular one. So if anybody knows anything about this, or where it would have originally been sold, I would have been very interested to know, to be honest, uh, unless it was some kind of exclusive that was sold somewhere. But until... Uh, next time I shall say goodbye for now and uh, see you on the next video